when you picked up your camera kit you should have gone a camera module inside this box manual and the camera module itself put the camera module back in the anti-static bag until you use it later on side and then the next thing you should receive this is a bag with the rest of the components so, so tear open the bag in this yellow box is going to be the power supply and it should be a micro USB mail in alright let's see here you should go on the case for the raspberry pi zero These are the case components, the heat sink, uh, little grippy feet for the case, I go on the bottom of the case, HDMI, the mini HDMI adapter, and a USB cable, it's micro USB, the female USB. Next, we're getting the smaller static bag, anti-static bag. You're going to get a micro SD card with a Linux OS already pre-installed. We're going to flash that OS later with a different one. And the Ziploc type anti-static bag should be your Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the main component. Be careful with it. So let's put it back in an anti-static bag. Let's set it aside. And you also might have gotten a little circular plastic plate piece. You will not need this, so just put this aside. Alrighty. So now that you have all your components out, let's assemble the Raspberry Pi Zero camera module. You're gonna have your power supply, put that aside. Now for the case, it's gonna have the main piece, the body of the case, and three top covers. You are not gonna use this one, nor this one. You're gonna use the one with the hole in the middle, because that's where the camera's gonna go. So let's put this aside. Alrighty. Now Let's get the Raspberry Pi Zero out. And let's get the heat sink. That's this little piece right here. This is what's going to help keep the processor on the Pi Zero cool. And that's going to go on this chip right there. Make sure you don't touch that with your finger, you get oils on it. You want to peel the back, the blue back off the heat sink. Just the blue film, not the white part. That's the thermal paste. Alrighty, I want to place it on that part right there. And push on it firmly. Make sure it's on there, nice and secure. All right. The micro SD card 
put it aside for now. We still need to flash this. Alrighty, so now get the little rubber feet, get the pink case. Let's place the feet on it. You don't have to do this, but I'm just getting this out the way. Down, make sure they're on there firmly. Garbage. Alrighty. Now let's get the camera module. Let's get it out of the anti static bag. And toss it aside. Alright, so the camera module is going to have this white ribbon. You are not going to need this. Ribbon cable. You will not need this. So flip it around to the back. And you're going to see this clamp right here. What you have to do, if you have nails, pull on the sides of the clamp. Pull on it. Or if you have like, something to kind of pry it sideways, not up. And pry it to the right. Or the left, whichever way you're holding it, and then slide. So this black piece has to slide outward. You can, you know, push it inward, so you can see. It goes in, and you unlock it by pulling it away. And you're able to release the ribbon. So I'll toss this aside. All right, now you got the camera module by itself. So now. In the bag, you should have gotten a smaller ribbon cable that looks like this. Alrighty, you're going to connect the wide end to the camera module with the gold contacts facing downwards. So this is the back of the module. You want the gold contacts, these right here, facing downward. And while this is still open, make sure it's unlocked all the way. Slide the camera or the ribbon inward, just like that. Make sure it's in all the way. Make sure it's in straight. You can tell by this black part right here. If it's kind of crooked. It's gonna look like that. Make sure it's even and all the way. So just push it in a little firm. Then push the way I like to do it is make sure it's up. So let you let gravity hold it in. And just push down on the both sides of this clip. And it clip down. Make sure it's down all the way. Give it a slight tug. Make sure it's in. And that's good to go. Now, the narrow end of the ribbon cable you want to connect to the Raspberry Pi. There's only one spot it can go, isn't this spot right here? It has that similar clamp down connection. And let's see, it looks like the contacts are facing downward, so this is the top of the Raspberry Pi. You want the gold contacts, these right there, facing downward. Make sure that this clamp is opened all the way. Slide it in there, push it on the, all the way. Make sure it's in there firmly. See, so right there, it's a little crooked. It's not in straight. Then just move, or turn it upward, let gravity hold it in, and then just push down on the clamp. Make sure it's in there evenly. Give it a nice tug. Alright, it's in there. Now, 
you want to get your case. We're going to put the pi zero in the case and the way it's oriented these connect these empty connections right here are going to be on the side with the opening. That's how this aligns and you should be able to clip it into little plastic pegs on the case. Just give it put make just push it in there firmly, make sure it's in there. You're gonna have this opening. So there is a slot for it. If you wanted, if you didn't want, if you didn't care for using this, and you know, it's you're, you're flexible with these. I, you know, I, this is the way I'm putting it together. But you, honestly, you can do it however you want. All right. So that's why there's a slot right there. So if you wanted to, sh I'll put that ribbon through there and have a, d a separate case for this. And you can get online or 3D print. More than welcome to do that. All right. So now that we have that set, we're going to line up the camera with the top case. So there's also plastic pegs that line up with these holes on the camera module. We're going to just push it in there, just like that. Okay, you got to snap it in there, it seems like. Well, that took a bit of work, but there are clips on each side of the top case. There, there. So you're going to have to work them in there. So the best way of doing that is to put it in at an angle and pull on the clip a little bit to slide it in all the way. So now it's locked into place. So that's going nowhere. Now there should be enough clearance for the heat sink. And there you go. Close it up. You got all the ports. Now there's your Pi Zero camera assembled. All right. So now we're going to do the programming part of the Raspberry Pi Zero camera. We're going to be using the OS Motion Eye to Linux OS. In order to do that, the, you need the micro SD card that was provided, as well as a um, SD card reader or micro USD card reader that was not provided with the kit. Um, you can get usually you can get an adapter that's um, an SD card adapter. You just slide into micro USB. Uh, micro SD card into it or you can buy um, just a, a multi card reader from Walmart, Target, even Amazon for under five bucks. Alrighty, once you have the micro SD card plugged into the card reader and that's plugged into your computer, we're going to go ahead and download Motion Eye. I will provide the links for the software I'm going to be showing in the description. I will provide the links. Alrighty, so we're going to go to the Motion Eye software first. When you click on the link, it should take you to this page. We're going to scroll down to Raspberry Pi A, B, A, B, Compute Module 0 and 0W zero models. We're going to go ahead and click. The link that says latest version 20200606. Now, since I already downloaded this, well, I'm going to click it anyways. You're going to download it, and it's going to be a zip file. Usually, if you have a uh, Windows 10, um, it, sh you sh it should be able to extract with uh, the already built in software into Windows 10. So, I'm going to go to the folder. And this is how it's going to look like. If you have WinRAR, I used WinRAR to extract it. All I did was hit right click and extract here. Yeah, WinRAR is also a good extraction software. So I'll show you where to find that. WinRAR. I just Google WinRAR and it should be the first one. Just download WinRAR. Get the free one. 
and that's all you should need. Just right click, once that's installed, right click and extract here, and then it will extract the image, the OS image for the SD card. All right, once that's extracted, you're going to want to install the SD card flasher. We're going to use Bolana Etcher, and we'll provide the link for this in the description as well. So once you hit download and install it, I already have it installed. Go ahead and open it up. Now make sure you have the micro SD card provided plugged into the computer via a card reader, an SD card reader, or micro SD card reader. And we're going to flash from file because that's what we have. We have the file. Now I'm going to go to where I saved it, and it's on a desktop. That's just what I named it. You can save it wherever you want, in whatever folder you want. Just remember where you saved it. Usually when you download stuff from the internet, it gets saved to a downloads folder. But in my case, I set it up so it downloads to a separate folder. So we're going to... And when you're in Windows, like, Windows 7 or Windows 10, you should, it should look like a little disk on a piece of paper. That's a disk image file. So we're going to select that. That's our file. And hit open. Now we're going to select the SD card you want it to write to. So here comes up generic micro SD. That's it. It's almost 16 gigs. It's about. And select that. and then we're gonna flash it so what that's gonna do is it's gonna erase everything that was previously on there there was already an operating system for the Raspberry Pi on there but we don't need that one so we're gonna erase it and it's gonna put on the, the surveillance software so click flash and if any pop-up like this comes up say yes that's regarding to the flashing so I give it a minute or two. Could be faster. Alrighty, now the fat flashing is complete, so we're done with that. Now you can close Belena Etcher, and in the description, I will also provide a link to download this text file. Now, once you download the text file, you're gonna want to open it, and at the top where it says country. You want to put US and you're going to need a, um, a wireless network. So your Wi-Fi name, the name of your wireless network, you're going to put it in here. So my, so it's going to, be, um, you can usually find it by searching the Wi-Fi networks and see what you're connected to. So right here I'm connected to staff upper. That's what I would put in the SSID. And then you would put in your password. Just staff upper. And then I'm gonna put the password. Alrighty. So now I'm gonna save it. and close it. Now what I want to do, I want to change the extension. It's no longer going to be a text file. TXT, that means text file. 
we're going to right click and click on nope let's right click on there we go rename then I'm going to erase the text file and we're going to make it c o n f enter hit yes there you go now it's a different file it's a con file so now what we want to do we want to open up let me go back and we want to open up let's see so we want to copy this file and go under computer and if the SD card doesn't show up like this just unplug the card reader and then plug it back in and it should come up there we go so yeah we're gonna open file folders but if you don't get this dialog box you can just double click this and we're gonna paste the new file in this directory so it should be at the bottom now if you have the correct SS your network name SSID and the correct password you should have no problems after this so and uh, that's it for the programming now you're gonna close this window and you can either eject the SD card or you can just unplug it however you like to do it. I strongly recommend ejecting it I know I didn't do it the last time but definitely do it this time just to prevent any possible problems in the future and that's it for the programming now you take the SD card and put it into your uh, Pi Zero now you want to make sure your Pi Zero is properly programmed so we're gonna stick the HDMI adapter into the HDMI port and then let's go ahead and get an HDMI cable and we're going to plug it into a screen. It can be a monitor or a TV, whichever. We're just going to make sure it's programmed properly and we're going to get the IP address so then you can use the IP address to view the video stream. So let's plug that in. Let's get the power plugged in. The power port is the one on the far right. It has a little power symbol on it. Plug in your other end to the outlet. This may take a minute for it to boot up. Make sure you make sure I'm the correct input here. Yep. Open it up. See if it's actually powered on. It's powered on. Alrighty, once your Raspberry Pi Zero is booted into MotionEye, you're going to get a, a screen like this. So the only thing you need to do is get the IP address, which is towards the bottom, and it should be that one right there. So you're going to type in this whole address, except these last three characters. You do not need these right there. You do not need those. Just that address right there. You type it into your browser, and we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how that looks like. All right. Now that you got the IP address, we're gonna type it into a web browser on your computer. So go ahead and do it. Now. My IP address on my Raspberry Pi Zero is going to be different from yours, so do not copy what I'm typing. When we hit enter, 
There we go. We're in the Motion I uh, operating system installed on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now this is what is used to for surveillance on the Raspberry Pi Zero. So all you have to do is type in admin, hit enter, and there it is. So there's a problem with my camera physically. I, something's wrong with the connection. So yours should come up. You should see something on yours if your connect if your camera is properly connected to the Raspberry Pi Zero. But if you have any problems with that, you feel free to come into the Tech Annex. We're open when the library is open, or feel free to email us. And that's pretty much it. And you have successfully um, put together a DIY surveillance camera and programmed it. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, whether it's email or in person. And uh, thanks for watching.